Okay, so some students have been asking for some support on the last set of work I said, that was the coordinate geometry. So what I'm going to do is continue um, with a few more explanations on this video. I mean, it's not, it's not a live stream, so you watch it when you're ready. There won't be a chat service, you'll have to drop a message via Microsoft Teams. So I'm just going to go through questions one by one, describe what's going on, explain the techniques you need to apply. Um, I'm not going to do the ones that I've done in the video already. Um, so something like finding a gradient of a line um, for question one is something that you need to be able to rearrange. Okay, I may as well just do that one. So, so something gives you 5y plus 4x equals 3. That's pretty clearly not in the right form to find a... I'm just going to pop a little line there so I know how far I can go up to. Um, that's not in the form that you're looking for in terms of finding a gradient. So you rearrange, you get 5y equals 3 minus 4x, divide through by 5, and you get the gradient's actually minus 4 fifths. So that's 3 fifths. So let me get rid of that pen because that's garbage. Um, that can get pitched. There we go. In the minute went. So that's, to find a gradient, that's how you do it. Okay, so rearrange it's in the y equals mx plus c form. Um, I don't really care which order the mx and the c are in. Um, that doesn't matter. What matters is it's it's a singular y equals stuff. Whatever is the coefficient of the x at that point, that's your gradient. Okay. The second part of one was quite simple in that all you need to remember for this is that if you're parallel, so if you want, if you've got a line that's parallel to something else, so here we had a line that went y equals what was it minus four fifths x plus 3 over 5. So if you want some equation that's parallel to that, it's got to be in the form y equals exactly the same gradient x plus some other number. How do you find some other number? You substitute the coordinate in. Okay, so hopefully that made sense of question 1. That's all you need to know um, in terms of question 1. And it's just remember also perpendicular works in much the same way, except it just won't be the same gradient. It will be the negative reciprocal. All right? couple of quick seconds on the negative reciprocal while I'm here. So if you've got a negative reciprocal of a number, that's just minus one over the top of, so minus one third. Basically the de definition of a negative reciprocal, both numbers when you multiply them together equals minus one. Because the ne definition of a reciprocal are two numbers that multiply together equals one. So negative is just the same thing with the minus sign. Fractions slightly more interesting. Um, they just swap over, they flip. And that sort of makes sense if you think about it. Two, if you multiply these two numbers together, you get minus 10 over 10, which is minus 1. So that's the, the negative reciprocal stuff from, um, wasn't even in question 1. Um, circles. So quick little bit kind of info dump on question 2. Not that you need it for question 2, but just in general. x squared plus y squared equals 4 is obviously just a circle. It's circle 0, 0 because they're, you know, it's just x and y and radius 2. Okay, there are more interesting circles than that. We're going to come across them in question. Which question do you come across them? And I'll do it now, just to get out of the way. So we've got here x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 2y equals 15. On one hand, you should be kind of mathematically aware that not everything that x squared plus y squared is a circle. It's a conic section, definitely, but it's not necessarily a circle. But then, in terms of pragmatics, you're not going to meet any other kind of like conic sections other than the parabola, the x squared, um, the straight line, and the circle. So you could almost go, well, if it's x squared and y squared, it has to be a circle. It's not quite true in real maths, but it is true for the A-level maths that you're going to do. So that should clue you in as a circle. And all you do is complete the square for each one. So you go, this is going to be x plus 2. Kill yourself, plus. x minus 2. I'm so sorry about that. Um, x minus 2 all squared um, plus, well, if you're going to have x minus 2 all squared, you're going to have to take away 4, plus y plus 1 squared, that's just completing the square on this guy, minus 1 equals 15. So you end up with, if I've got that right, x minus 2 squared plus y minus, so y plus 1 squared, I don't see any particular mistakes there. And that's going to equal 20. So your radius will be the root of 20, your center of your circle. So radius is, remember it's just the square root, because it's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. 
So the radius is root 20. And the center point is 2 and minus 1. All right? So it's um, what makes the bracket 0. All right? So that's your center point there, and that's your radius there. OK, cool. Um, there are certain things with circles that you need to take from GCSE. I'm just going to sketch a few of them and talk to you about what you'd have to do as a response to those things. And a lot of this stuff is you probably know all the facts in different contexts. So if I said to you, okay, what do tangents, tangent and a radius mean? I hope after last session you go, oh, they're perpendicular. But like, it's not just having that fact in your head, it's being able to do something with it. And as we go through some questions, you'll see why, why that's a thing. Um, okay, cool. So what do we need to know as basic hard line facts is that if you've got a circle and you've got a radius, a tangent, that's 90 degrees there. Two tangents from the same point, so I suppose there's a tangent there and a tangent there, this length and this length would be the same. Yes, yeah, so you need to know that. Um, what else would you need to know for circles? The tangent radius 90 degrees, the fact that they're both the same length. Um, you generally actually don't really need to know, well, you do need to know them because they've got a habit of turning up in other places, the other circle theorems. So if you want to flip back in your GCSE notes, hopefully you've still got them. If not, just Google circle theorems. I'm not doing circle theorems lesson. There might be, I mean, I don't know, dig it around in my YouTube channel. There might be a circle theorems video. I mean, I hate circle theorems. I'm not sure that there would be, but there might be. I mean, I'm really, like, you know, over the summer, I'm going to, like, organise and streamline my videos so, like, you can find anything anywhere. Right now, I think the GCSE ones are sorted, though. So if you look in the GCSE file, there probably is, there is, if it's there, that's what it'll be. It won't be any place else. Okay, um, what else do I really want to talk about? Yeah, also some of that chord, um, a perpendicular bisector of a chord. So remember, the definition of a chord is a line that cuts to the circle in two points, but isn't a diameter, so it doesn't cut the full length. Um, that per the perpendicular bisector of that goes through the center of the circle. All right. So if you have a chord and you draw a chord and you work out a perpendicular bisector of it. The line of the perpendicular bisector will go through the center of a circle. So that's pretty handy. Why? Because if you have two perpendicular bisectors of chords, where those two lines meet, let's call them L1 and L2, that's the center of the circle. And that's quite a useful way of finding the center of a circle. So just create any two chords, work out each one's perpendicular bisector, equate them. The coordinate where they meet is the center of the circle. So that's probably another thing you need to walk around with. If there's any more that comes up in, in the form of the questions, um, I'll let you know. So that kind of brings us quite nicely to question three. Calculate the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Let's just analyze the words. Um, perpendicular means it's, it's at 90 degrees, it cut, and bisector means it cuts it in half. It explicitly means half, it doesn't mean two pieces. Yeah? Um, so what we're going to do is pretty simple. First thing to do is find the midpoint, because the midpoint is where the perpendicular bisector is going to go through. So we've got A is minus one, minus two. I might need to get up and put the light on. Kind of light's fading in here a little bit. I'm going to have a look at the video now. Let me see how dark this is. Can you see this? Can't we do just about, and just because it's white and it reflects everything. So yeah, that's fine. That's doing okay at the moment. Um, if I need to turn light on, I will. Um, five and seven. So we know that the center point of this is, well, between minus one and five, that's the gap is six. So it would be, what, 2? So let's call the midpoint M, for obvious reasons. Um, add them together, you're going to get 2. Add them together, you're also going to get, amazingly enough, 2. So your midpoint is 2, 2. OK, fair enough. Great. So we know that this, whatever this perpendicular bisector is, it's going through 2, 2. All right? The next thing to do, so put 2, 2 here as our midpoint. We can work out the gradient, all right? And the gradient of this guy, gradient of AB, you get by the classic y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm just going to try and work that out in my head. Um, I've been very lazy and not looking at answers. So you go 10 over 6, 5 over 3. Okay, so the gradient of AB is 5 over 3, which implies that the gradient of the perpendicular bisector is 3 fifths, um, negative 3 fifths rather, obviously because it's a perpendicular bisector, um, you know, negative. So we're going to call this guy, um, let's call this perpendicular bisector L1. We know it's got gradient y equals minus, well, it's got equation, y equals minus 3 fifths x 
plus C, and all that's left of us to do is put the 2, 2 into that, okay, and then we'll be able to find what C is, all right? So what did I do there? I found the midpoint, because I know it's going to go through the midpoint. I found the gradient of the, the chord, yeah, or the line. Um, in this case, it was just a line. Um, did the negative reciprocal on the line to get the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. And then I just subs in 2, 2, okay, and I'll leave that for you to do. Um, show something as a tangent. I showed that in class. I'm going to show something as a tangent. What you're basically saying is that equation only inter interacts with the circle once. So when you do simultaneous equations of those two things, there's only one value for x, and obviously then if there's only one value for x, there's only one value for y. So that's how four works. Number five, um, the line y equals two x minus three meets the x-axis of point P, and it meets the x-axis. Okay, fine, so you can just R. So find the coordinates of R. Well, number one, that's just simultaneous equations. Okay, and then for number two, you've got to draw. One of the people that was complaining this is quite difficult is um says that she's a kind of visual learner this should be directly in your ballpark because what you need to do is plot p q and r not plot sketch at least plot p q and r and think to yourself what kind of triangles are they okay so so what kind of coordinates are they yeah now i'm looking at this this one's got a gradient of two they're not these guys are not um okay this is Let's just let's just do this because it's actually remarkably simple when you think about it. Because you've got a coordinate on the x-axis, you've got a coordinate on the y-axis, and you've got a coordinate at r. So let's have a quick think about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first bit quickly. But I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up the answer to the first bit because I can't bother to do it. And if anyone actually feels the need that they need that done for them, I mean, I'm not going to mock you, but you know. It is very much the case that it's literally simultaneous craziness and it's laziness on my part. Um, and I'm willing to accept laziness, and that's not the end of the world. Um, number five, the coordinates that you get given, or the coordinates that you work out, are P is 1.50. Um, What did they claim? I'm just going to go back to question. If they're both of them, just going to be... That's quite simple if it is. Okay, so they're both on the x-axis. That is very simple then. Because what you've got, you've got quite a simple triangle. You've got... I was going to tell you what, what the coordinates are. I mean, I didn't even read the question properly. I thought I assumed it would go through x, um, 1 goes through x and 1 goes through y, because that's what the movie app is. But if they give you that, I mean, P is this. And I'm going to go and turn that on. Um, Q equals 2, 0, and R equals 1.70.4, and you'd get that from doing a calculation. I'm just going to run a bit of that. Pretty good. Let me get some sound effects. There we go. Then um, that's like the world's easiest question, because it's literally just going to be a straight line that goes... From 1.5 to 2, so there's 1 at 1.5, there's 1 at 2, and there's some random coordinate up here. I mean, 1.70.4, up there. So that's 0 0.4 tall. And then you just go a half base times height. Yeah, so that y coordinate there is 0 0.4. I know it's 1.70.4, I don't really care um, about its positioning in terms of the x. I really I do care about the fact that it's y. I mean, that's pathetically easy, isn't it? We're not going to waste any more time on that, I don't think. You see how drawing a picture is super, super helpful, though. Otherwise, it's, like, impossible. Okay, cool. I showed you how to work out coordinates of a circle. If you want to show something lies on the circle, put it into the equation and show the equation works. So if you want to show that a point lies on the circle, pop it on the equation, into the equation, substitute the x, substitute y, and prove to yourself that it's on there. Find the equation to the tangent of the circle at the point P. Okay, so this is a little bit more interesting. I'm going to give you the method for it so you can try this. The first thing you're going to do is find the equation of the radius at P. Now, how would you do such a... I'm going to let this pen die. No, it's still, still got ink in it. Let's see what it looks like on the video. I mean, I'm, I'm doing this... Ooh, that's bad. Let's get a new pen. That one missed it. Ooh, nice work. Um... Yeah. Right, things are better. 
Um, so, like, the problem is this, right? I asked you to... Right, let me rub this out. I can barely see this. I'm going to have to watch this back and see whether these things are all still visible. Radius of pixels. It was, like, visible about 10 seconds. Well, that's not that good either. I feel like the light's kind of the problem. Let's put black. Let's use black. Because at least that's, you know, against... And that thing, I need to change the plastic before, I'll change the plastic before Monday. Uh, right, that is far better, thank God for that. Okay, so radius at P. So we're talking about question six now, right? No, six, six, seven, six, six, yeah, six, yeah. So, find the gradient of radius at P. How would you do that? If you've done part A correctly of six, you know where the centre of the circle is. So you can go... The radius goes from center. I can't remember what I said the center was. Um, positive two, negative one. If I remember correctly, so that's your center. And then it stands that if it's that simple, I can just look at it and get it. This can't be too hard of a question. And then you've got four and minus five. So this is your center, and that's P. You can easily work out a gradient of the radius by, you know, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So in this case, the gradient, so grad, I really want to use a delta there, grad, Radius is what minus five minus minus one. Um, so it'd be four over two. So gradient, yeah, two. All right. So it seems reasonable. Um, except it would be negative one because you're going from two minus one to four minus one. Yeah, that makes sense, right? So the gradient of the tangent would be the negative reciprocal, which is going to be a half. All right, positive half times. Basically, you're doing a negative reciprocal minus, so you can get positive half. So you can write this equation. And you know it goes through P, so you just subs in, and you get on with your life. I mean, none of this is particularly difficult, hopefully. Um, okay, 7 and 8, and then I get to shut up. Um, this is not my, my most fun thing to do on a Saturday afternoon, I must say. Saturday evening now, actually. Bloody hell. I'm get on with this. I did 7. I mean... I'm not, I don't see any particular point of doing it again. It was on the video. Did I do eight? Okay, so eight, I'll do eight. I'll talk you through it. If people want to see seven, hold fire until like, you know, lesson time and I'll do seven again. But it is in the video. The video is up now. So. There's that. Okay, eight. Find the coordinates of the center of the circle. I mean, it's just the midpoint of A and B. If A, B is the diameter, center of the circle will be halfway between A and B. Find the radius of the circle. Okay, so yeah, radius is magnitude again. So you've got choices here. You could either go um, Pythagoras of, so the center of this would be what? Four minus, no, it wouldn't be minus anything, it would be one, wouldn't it? Four, one. So that'd be the center of your circle, as far as I can see anyways, yeah? And then you just do Pythagoras on it, compared to either A or B, so I'm gonna go from 1 to 4 is 3, so 3 squared. From 3 to 1 is minus 2. It doesn't really matter. It's a minus. Don't care. And that will give you the radius. So just Pythagoras. And where those numbers come from are literally you subtracting. I mean, I should probably do it systematically just once. I know I'm going from 1 to 3, because that's where A is, and that's the center. So just subtract them. 4 minus 1 squared plus 1 minus 3 squared. That's why it was minus 2. Double. It doesn't matter. You can square it. Who cares, right? And that's just going to be what? Um, mental maths. Time 9 plus 4, 13. No. No. What's wrong with you? That's 9. Yeah, it's 13. Kill yourself. Right, there you go. Radius is root 13. All right. Um, any other particular issues on this? Find the equation of the circle. Fine. It's going to be x minus 4. Remember, you can get it from the center plus the, um, just square that, which is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, so it's just that, was in the circle. Um, it cuts the circle again at a and d. You've seen examples of this before. So what you've got to do is just solve that as simultaneous equations. One of your answers will come out that x equals 1, the other one will come out as something else, and that will give you the other coordinate for d. Um, and once you've got the x coordinate for d, you just find y. Prove that the line is perpendicular. Proving something is perpendicular, A, B, and C, D, is really, really simple. You just need to find out the gradient of A, B, find out the gradient of C, D, and show that when you multiply them together, they equal minus 1. Definition of a negative reciprocal. All right.
I'm going to shut this off now. I'm going to watch this through. Pray for my soul. Um, I'll see you around, I guess. Monday. Take care.